Hi everybody, it's Mr. Matt from the Piper Branch of the Montgomery City County Public Library System. We're back for another storybook time for the week. Uh, sorry we didn't have one earlier this week, but we were dealing with some other technical issues that required uh, me to be doing other things besides recording story times. But we're here with story time today. Uh, Grown-ups, please go ahead and click that share button to help us reach your friends and neighbors during this time uh, that we're close to the public. And if you'll come on back and just watch the video after you click share, and as always, feel free to click like or love um, if you feel like doing so as well, because that helps us reach more people too. Uh, first, I want to thank the people who responded to my question from uh, the last, uh, the Easter storybook time I did, where I asked um, what other animals besides the cat and the skunk that we read about in the Easter books would make good assistance for the Easter bunny. And Jack said an elephant because an elephant can use his trunk to shoot Easter eggs into all the yards, which I thought was a very efficient um, idea of getting hiding Easter eggs for people. Um, his sister Catherine said a zebra. She didn't go into why she thought a zebra, but I thought that would work pretty well. Maybe a zebra could cover Africa and let the Easter Bunny cover other parts of the world. And my wife Karen uh, said a cheetah, because a cheetah can run fast and deliver the eggs super fast. Kind of like what Cat did on the uh, motorcycle with Easter Bunny in the sidecar. I um, also want to thank Miss Alba for sharing our videos with her friends and family in Mexico and say hi to Miss Laura in Mexico who's been enjoying the videos with her family. So thank you for um, watching along with us and um, hope you enjoy the stories today. And again I will have a question for you to answer uh, in the comments at the end of today's story. So listen all the way to the end for that question. Um, now, our first story today, um, I'll go into it in just a second. Let's do a hello song, though, because I don't want to forget that. Remember, hello, hands up. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Here we go. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Good job, everybody. Give yourself a round of applause. Now, our stories today are about ducklings because it's springtime, and often in springtime, you'll see ducklings and goslings, baby ducks and baby goose, following their mamas around the ponds around in our area here in Pike Road and Montgomery and beyond. And so the sign for duck, the sign language for duck, take two fingers and your thumb, put them in front of your mouth. Don't touch your mouth, though. Keep your hands over here and go quack, quack, quack. That's the sign for duck. Quack, quack, quack. Now, our first story. Now, I want to give a warning. It says has the term love story in the title, but it is not a kissy, kissy face love story. What the love is about is a love of music and how musing to music and making music and being creative can make us feel better during scary times. And this is called The Unexpected Love Story of Alfred Fiddle Duckling. Again, that's The Unexpected Love Story of Alfred Fiddle Duckling by Timothy Basil Ehring, and it was published by Candlewick Press. And we're going to see how music helps Alfred Fiddle Duckling feel a little less scared and when he's in a scary time of his life. So here we go. Captain Alfred, who is the person there, not Fiddle Duckling yet. Captain Alfred was sailing home. On his little boat, there were new ducks for his farm and nestled safe inside his fiddle case a precious gift for his wife. And there we see Captain Alfred, and there's the ducks that he got for his farm, and there's also his doggy, also on the boat, and there is the precious gift for his wife inside his fiddle case. It was a beautiful duck egg that was very close to hatching. A duckling born in my fiddle case must be named Alfred Fiddle Ducklin, Captain Alfred said with a giggle. You're going to be a very special little duckling, Captain Alfred told the egg. 
that something unexpected was coming. Can you see what it is? Dark clouds and lightning? Yes, it was a storm, a big one. A sudden and mighty gale whipped the seas into a raging fury. And Captain Alfred and his doggy and the ducks and the fiddle case with the egg in it were all tossed out of his boat into the sea. After an endless hour of howling wind and tossing seas, there was silence. No waves, no wind, a blanket of fog covered everything. Hidden in the whiteness as thick as pea soup sat a little cottage overlooking the bay. On the porch stood a gentle lady in a gray wool coat. Tears of worry dropped from her cheeks into the mist. Yet far offshore, deep in the fog, alone and drifting, the egg cracked, and little Alfred Fiddle Duckling was born. No one was there to hug little Alfred when he stumbled out of his shell, but there was an object floating not too far away in the waves. What do you think it might be? Is it one of the other ducks? Part of the boat? Alfred quacked, but the object did not quack back. Alfred swam up to it, but it did not reach out to him. So I guess it's not one of the other ducks or Captain Alfred or the doggy. What is it? Yep, it's Captain Alfred's fiddle. Alfred embraced the object with all of his heart, and he caressed it so it would not feel as lonely as he did. And then something unexpected happened. As Alfred's feathers brushed across the fiddle's strings, the object made the most beautiful sound Alfred had ever heard. You can see the colors coming up from the fiddle representing the music that Alfred's making. Alfred loved the object. And by the sound of its beautiful music, the object loved Alfred too. They drifted through the fog over wave after wave, playing together until, bump, Alfred felt something touch his feet. What do you think his feet touched? Yep. He had made it all the way to land. They had landed at a very mysterious place. Alfred held the object close. Don't be afraid, he said. And in a few moments, the soft, comforting sounds began Again, the sounds drifted on through the foggy reeds until they reached the very keen ears of a beast that was lurking in the tall grasses. The beast's heart pounded. How unexpected. He wanted to follow those sounds. He charged through the fog and found them. Drool dripped from the beast's jaw. It leaned in even closer. Alfred trembled with fear, and his music became fast and wild. Because as he was scared, he played faster. The huge beast lifted its front paws high into the air until it was standing tall on its hind legs. And then suddenly... Well, that big old beast started to dance. What was the beast? Yes, it's Captain Alfred's dog. Captain Alfred's lost dog had longed for the sounds of his master's fiddle. He, too, had been very lonely. Now, in just a twinkle of an eye, 
The duckling and the dog were best buddies. Being lost with a friend was much better than being lost alone. Sadly, though, lost was lost. As the hours stretched by, the friends grew cold. Can you see they're shivering? Brr. They were wet, helpless. The tiny, quivering music left in the object was not enough to boost their spirits. But that tiny sound was enough to excite the ears of the gentle lady wearing the gray wool coat who was praying for her husband, her dog, and the new ducks for their farm to return home safely. So do you know who, who the lady in the gray coat is? Yep, it's Captain Alfred's wife. She ran through the fog straight toward the sound of Alfred's fiddle. Tears of happiness streamed from her eyes when she saw her beloved doggy. Then she marveled at the beautiful duckling and his magical fiddle playing. Please don't stop, she said. Don't ever stop playing your wonderful music. You are a very special duckling. Well, Alfred felt more joy at these strangely familiar words than he had ever felt in his body before. It's no surprise that the most joyous sounds of all bounced from his fiddle. But, you see, those sounds were a surprise. A very unexpected surprise to someone else. Who is it? Yeah, it's Captain Alfred and the ducks on what's left of his boat. And you can guess what will happen if Alfred Fiddle Ducklin just keeps on playing. What do you think will happen? Yep. Captain Alfred followed the sound of the music through the mist and fog back to the shore and to his house with his wife and his doggy and little Alfred Fiddle Duckling. And that's the end of the unexpected love story of Alfred Fiddle Duckling by Timothy Basil Ehring and published by Candlewick Press. Isn't that a sweet story? I really like that one. It's very heartwarming and kind of, you know, when I listen to music, it makes me feel better sometimes too. Um, so if there's a certain song you like, um, have your grown-up mention that in the comments. Um, if there's one that makes you dance or makes you happy or giggle or laugh, um, mention that in the comments. If you want to, we can share that on our next story time. We have one more quick story today. It's also about a duckling. This is called Swim, Swim, Sink by Jen Harvey, and it's published by Disney Hyperion Books. Now, little ducklings do kind of know how to swim almost right away, right? So we have a bit of a problem with this one, because clearly he doesn't. And that messes up the story and also the way the, the words rhyme in the story. So let's see if he ever learns how to swim in Swim, Swim, Sink by Jen Harvey. One happy duck sits down to rest, three tiny eggs, one twiggy nest. And you see there's a little worm here. He's going to be a friend to the little duckling like right away, as soon as the duckling's hatched. Three eggs hatch, crack, crack, crack. Say that with me. Three eggs hatch, crack, crack, crack. Three tiny ducks, quack, quack, quack. Let's say that with me too. Three tiny ducks, quack, quack, quack. Look how excited the worm is that the ducks have been born. 
three tiny ducks in one straight line. New happy flock, all feeling fine. Three tiny ducks, splish, splish, splash. Say that with me. Three tiny ducks jump right in. Splish, splish, splash. Swim, swim. Splish, splish, splash. Swim, swim. Sink. Sink? Wait. What? Let's, let's, let's try that again. Here we go. Three tiny ducks jump right in. Splish, splish, splash. Swim, swim. Sink. Again? Huh. I didn't know ducks could sink. This is a problem. Ducks need to swim. Plus, all this sinking is ruining the rhyme. Let's see if we can figure this out. Maybe a quick running start and a great big jump? Did that work? Nope, he's sinking. Maybe not. How about a push from below? What's that? Yes, a turtle. Does the turtle look happy that duckling's on his back? No, he doesn't. How about water wings to help him learn to swim? Have you worn water wings before? I have. But is he even swimming? He's just kind of Hanging there above the water. And the worm has a very cute little um, life preserver on his back. How about state-of-the-art scuba gear? Well, I mean, yeah, that would work. Because um, he's got a really cool scuba outfit. And look, Worm even has an adorable little scuba outfit, too, with a tank and everything. The only problem is that um, he's really scaring his mama and his siblings. So I don't think that's going to work either. How about stilts to stay high and dry? And Worm's hanging on for dear life right there. But he's still not swimming, is he? No, he's just kind of walking way above the water. And Mama's like, come down here! You're going to get hurt! How about a jet ski? Zoom! Well, he's still not really swimming, and he looks pretty scared doesn't he? Like all the fish are kind of scared or angry that he's messing up their pond too. So I think he's given up. So they sit and they watch a leaf float by. But then a light bulb appears above Duckling's head. You know what it means when there's a picture of a light bulb of someone's head? It means there a light, is there a light bulb there? No. It means the duckling has an idea. So he goes off, and we hear, bang, 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 bam, bam, tap, 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 clang, clang, wham, wham, tap, 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 tap. What do you think he's doing? Sounds like he might have a a hammer, maybe some wood and some metal, maybe for the clang. Wait, apparently they've got it. Let's try this again. Ahem. Three tiny ducks swim, swim, float. This clever duck used its shell as a boat. What kind of boat is it? It's a pirate ship, it looks like to me. He's got a really cool hat and eye patch. And look, he's got the worm up in the uh, pier looking out. And there's Mama. And there's his siblings. And they're smiling and laughing because he's finally can join them in the water. All right. So three tiny ducks swim, swim, float. This clever duck used its sail as a boat. Quack, quack. R. Can you give me an R? R. Good.
good job. And that's the end of swim, swim, sink. So for the question for this storybook time, what other things do you think Duckling should have tried to help him swim and stay in the water with his mom and his siblings? Tell your grown-up what you think Duckling would have tried to swim or to float and have them put that in the comments and I will mention um, who commented and what they commented at my next storybook time next week. Uh, that wraps it up for me today. Again, grown-ups, please share the video. We appreciate you helping us get the word out that we're doing this, trying to serve folks uh, during this time. Uh, now it's time for a goodbye song. So goodbye, hands up. And goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. We will see you later with some more stories.